But can you advocate for yourself? Absolutely. I mean, you know what, even if, even if so much as they're like, okay, this is going to come up, we have changed the script and there's going to be this, this nude scene, you're good with it, right? As a performer, we can say, um, sure, uh, but I, I would like to request an intimacy coordinator. Once a performer requests an intimacy coordinator, they will bring in an intimacy coordinator. Okay, that's kind so of... So that is a way to, to at least get some support. Talent Talk is sponsored by Company of Rogues Actors Studio. New York-style training for actors at all stages of their journey. With our part-time classes and full-time masterclass program, Rogues provides a unique post-secondary option under the guidance of working professionals. Mentoring and developing professional film and theater artists since 1993, Calgary's longest-running independent studio offers practical hands-on classes in a positive, supportive environment. Check us out at corogues.com. Company of Rogues, passionate about the art of acting. I'm Gary McLean. You're watching Talent Talk. Thanks for tuning in, as always. And uh, if you don't mind, please do go to the YouTube channel and subscribe today. As always, the support's appreciated. And also just a reminder that this and previous episodes are available on podcast mediums. Basically anything you listen to, it's probably there. So check us out there as well. Um, and finally, sponsors. We have them this year. So excited. So we'll start off with Six Degrees Sound and Music, whose booth we are currently in. So thank you to those guys for doing the audio on this. And Regan, we'll give a personal shout out to him because he's been kind of our guy this entire season. So thank you. Um, we also have a Workflow Film, camera operation currently right now by uh, Jared Eves. So thank you to him as well. We have Company of Rogues, which is a Calgary local acting studio. So thanks to them for hopping on board. We have Heard of One Media. We have uh, Counting Co, <laughs> Counting Coup, Indigenous Film Academy. We have RJ Talent, and finally we have Actor Alberta. So a great line of sponsors this year. So thank you so much. You guys are making this season a memorable one. I hope so. Thank you. Now today's guest, uh, she's actually been on the show before, um, back way back in season one, and uh, she's an actress, stunt actor. And more recently, she's a nationally accredited uh, intimacy coordinator. Yes. <laughs> she's a nationally accredited intimacy coordinator. So please join me in welcoming Shauna McGill Legault. And that name is a mouthful, by the way. Just so you it know. is. <laughs> it is. I'm pretty excited, though, about it. It's, um, yeah, got married this past year. So, yes. <laughs> And what a grand do it was. Um, I, I showed up at the the end of it. <laughs> and it was something I got to tell you. It was. It was a whole community that came together. And I think that that it was actually like, it looked like a film set because it was mostly our film community that came together and put it together on a five-week notice. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was an entire set, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think we even had some yeah, Edmonton crew come down, you know. <laughs> <laughs> We did have Edmonton crew come down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so there's good. Edmonton stunties and yeah. Absolutely. So congrats on that. Thank you. Um, and yeah, well, just a little shout out to uh, Stefan as well. And uh, they actually do some stunt work together. So uh, that's do. pretty cool. Uh, you guys practice with each other? Uh, uh, yep. Mm -hmm. All the time? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of fun. How long have you guys been doing the stunt work now? Well, you. Uh, I mean, I got into it pretty late. So, I mean, I didn't start it until... Yeah, I'm just gonna say later. I'm not gonna say my age, but uh, it's been it's been I don't know 15 years. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Um, so you know you're you're what 25 then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I all started. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> and <laughs> what made you want to do that? Because again, it's not you know it's physically a um, challenge. What made me? You know, being I think that it's like starting out as an actress, and we will get into intimacy. I do have a train of thought here. Um. Sorry, I hit the mic. Um, starting out as an actress uh, and then finding that world. Like, I wish I had known about it before. Uh, but I just, I was, I really came to it by luck. Um, I knew a stunt coordinator who was a fight coordinator in a production. It was actually a theatrical production I was working in. 
did an audition, was cast as like a female warrior. And he's like, okay, I'm just going to surround you with all these stunt guys because you don't know what you're doing in the, in the stunt world. And and I just had just had such a wonderful time that it was like, okay, I want to learn more. So I'm going to take boxing. I'm going to take sword. I'm going to, and you, you, you go down that rabbit hole and just, I get a lot, asked a lot how to get into stunts. And it's, um, it's not a question that that's an easy answer, especially in Alberta, because I mean, I, I know that in Vancouver, there's, there's workshops that happen all the time, but being in stunts is about relationships and it's about trust with your, with your other stunties, but really with your coordinators, it's your coordinators that are going to hire you. So they have to know that you have the skills that they need, uh, you, that you have the, the kind of common sense of like, you're not going to run up to someone and be embarrassing. Like, you know what I mean? So it is about building all of those those relationships, as well as building the skills of fight skills or sword or whatever it is that, that you want to you want to specialize in or you want to learn like the broad, broader everything. Um, some Muay Thai, some like whatever that is. But it is at the end of the day, it's about building relationships and meeting the coordinators. And, and that can be difficult in Alberta uh, because the most usually... The easiest way to meet a coordinator is to go to attend one of their workshops. But our coordinators tend to be working a lot. So, so it is. But there, I mean, there, there is a great new stunt community. Uh, my buddy Rod Coulter has a gym on 5th and they're doing lots of stunt training. So oh. if anyone wants to get involved, I would say that's the place in Calgary to go. Yes. And I've been actually looking a lot of his stuff on Instagram. Mm -hmm. It's very cool stuff he's doing. So... Yeah. Uh, yeah, just definitely check those out. Check him out if yes. you can. Yes. That would be an in for stunts. I keep seeing his videos on Instagram. I'm like, I really need to contact this guy just to learn some stuff. <laughs> he's he's a definitely interesting cat. I think he's just a, a wonderful human being. He's just so giving of like because I think I think you know this. Like anytime we learn something in the film industry, it's because someone is giving of their time. Yes. Like and it's a lot of giving and it's a lot of and and I think we've all done in there in our community we've all done that. The give, and I know he's just such a giver, so it's amazing. Nice. Have you ever done any horse stunts? I have. I don't do a lot of horse stunts um, because I'm not the best rider in the world. Okay. I'm a really good faller, though. Really good faller. So you want to like you want to give you a run for your money? I'm sure. <laughs> like you want to like go somewhere specific and do some fancy stuff? I'm like, no, but I can. You want me to fall off backwards? I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> but what I really wanted to talk to you though was intimacy. And yes. stunt coming from the stunt world into the intimacy world, they are so similar. Okay. They really are. If you can have a really well choreographed fight scene, you can have a really well choreographed sex scene. Simulated sex, not actual sex, let's be clear. It's it's funny because just before you came in, um, our camera guy, Jared, was just mentioning that how, hey, if you can coordinate stunts, you can coordinate intimacy. Absolutely. So yeah. It's absolutely true. Um, you want, like, if you want it to be, like, we want continuity. Like, I remember when there was an interview that came out last year, two years ago, from Sean Bean from, I think that's his name, don't quote me, um, from Game of Thrones. And he was saying how, oh, you know, intimacy coordinators, they take away the spontaneity of it. I was like, wow, I would never want to be in a fight scene with you because... I don't want a spontaneous fight scene. I'm going to get punched in the face. Like, that's not the point. The point is to tell the story, make it look as realistic as possible, as well do kind grace for your for your camera department to, so that we've got continuity that we can, you know, and it's, it's, it's called acting. It's not called exploitation. <laughs> yep. uh, so it is, I just think that it's, it's a really well choreographed scene with boundaries and consent and, and all of that. Like there's just no excuse for, and it's still happening to this day. And I've been on set when it happened, unfortunately, of like surprise nudity. And you're like, um, um, um what? Yeah. Which, yeah. And especially in today's world, I'm really surprised that they're still getting away oh, with that stuff. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's shocking. <laughs> Like, and how do you handle that? Something like that. Uh, like, uh, as, as you a, know, what every situation I think is different. Um, but it because you do like intimacy coordinating has it's there. It's it's I, I mean you think that it's kind of simple, but it's not. There's a there's a process to it. There's stuff that we do in pre production. There's stuff that we'll do before the day. There's a different things that we'll do on the day, and then and that will depend on on what is being 
done on the day. Like, so how many characters involved? Is there background in there? Like, there's there's a lot of of preparation that goes into making sure that there are no surprises on the day. Because that's what we want ultimately. We don't want anyone to be like, oh, I didn't, I didn't know that you needed to see my 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 nipples. Because that's quite that's a, a big thing for a lot of a lot of uh, of actors is they don't want to show their nipples. So you know, working around that, and so getting getting a clear vision of the story and and the clear vision from from your creative team of what they want to tell and how we're going to tell that, and making sure that's within the boundaries of our talent, making sure that our crew are aware of what is going on, because when there's surprise nudity, it isn't fair to our crew either. They are caught off guard and don't know where to look and don't know how to do their job. Like so, it's it's so it's it's not just protecting our talent; it's protecting our production as well. If somebody coming back in five years and saying, you know, I wasn't safe on that set; that director was terrible. Like we don't want that. We like we have a really good reputation in Alberta. We have crews that work really really hard, and they're good crews. And I would never want anyone to come back and say, oh, they didn't keep me safe. Right. So, so intimacy coordinators do can help with all of that. So it's not just making sure there's mints, which is something on some days I really am just a well-paid mint holder. Right, right. <laughs> well, so, it, for example, uh, and you don't not necessarily for yourself, but is there not, nothing in, say, the contracts where you can write in, hey, I'm not doing any nudity? Absolutely. And can they still kind of say, oh, by the way, we still need you to do some nudity? Or, or is there something that you can... Um... Once you have it in writing, and I think that's the point, like, especially when it comes to like nudity writers or simulated sex writers, once you have that, this is because it's that needs to be given to our, the, the, the talent and the talent's representatives for at least 48 hours ahead of time. It gets agreed upon, it gets signed. And that's part of like when there is a, 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 a writer on set. That's part of my job. Make sure that it's signed, make sure that it's clear. I'll go through it with the talent. But, um, but yeah, no, when that, once that is there, that is it. And they're like, oh, we actually really wanted to see your butt. And like, actually that is, that is not here uh, specifically. And sometimes it will specifically say like, no, no back nudity, whatever that is. Right. So if there is something specifically in there that they, that they are saying that will not be done, it will not be done. And that is the end of that. I mean, that's a start at least. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and intimacy coordinating isn't just about nudity right it's no um, <clears throat> no it's a, it's about boundaries and and consent and um I recently had it was it was I want to say like it's just a, a makeout scene but that's still vulnerable so and there's been scenes that have had no intimacy whatsoever that I've been called in for um the, because they were highly uh, it was a domestic violence and it was really brutal domestic violence. Um, so I, I was requested to be on set as just as a support, um, because we build relationships with our, with our, with our talent. And, and I, and I know that, you know, in this situation, okay, like there's, there's, it isn't, yeah, it isn't just about intimacy sometimes. Sometimes it's about just being, being an extra person to support. Right. And what's what's that process kind of look like? You're almost like a psychologist in a way, where you're no, no we're not. So, and okay. I say no, we're not because yes, we have mental health first aid, like to qualify. And there's certain qualifications you have to have to become an intimacy coordinator. Like you don't just go, I want to, I want to see naked people. Let's go with that. And like no one does that. We actually have to like you have to get first like yeah. So um, mental health first aid is one of those qualifications. And then there's like learning about modesty wear and uh, bystander intervention. And and so you. You do get a lot of skills that that sometimes can make you feel like a therapist, but you are not. You are not a qualified therapist, and and that was one thing on that specifically on that set that I talked about with domestic violence is they wanted a uh, someone there in case some of the crew might have been triggered. It was just a wonderful set, and it was a wonderful uh, production that really thought outside of the box. And they and we talked about this, and the the lead actress on it as well. She was like, "I want a safe space for anyone that's been through this because." Look at our like the amount of crew that was there. Unfortunately, statistically, it's 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 going to 
have happened to someone out there. It's going like, so they were just wonderful. But then they did say like, you know, like we want a therapist. I'm like, I'm not a therapist. I will absolutely be there to support, but I'm not a therapist. And we found a really good therapist and she stayed for the day and she was had a, had a trailer and she walked to the set and was checking and talked about different triggers that can happen for people, even if it's just, you know, you're watching this scene and you come and you start feeling sick. You start like shortness of breath, like all of like that's that was her training to say that this is this is what can happen and come talk to me if it does. Or, or every single union has and we had them all printed out. There are hotlines that we can call all of like DGC, ACTRA, uh, the Teamsters, IATSE, they all have different hotlines to support their their union members in any kind of mental health crisis, which is awesome and amazing that our unions have that. And it's it, this is all still quite new and mm -hmm. developing. Um, where is it kind of like within Alberta at least? Where do you see it at right now? Like, are you seeing a growth in it? Are you seeing changes yet? Yeah, I would say though that Alberta is a little behind. Okay. I believe I could be wrong, but we're getting there. Every production that that looks into into an intimacy coordinator, um, there's more and more of them, which is great. Um, there is still definitely the mentality here that, like, we've got some like Hallmark kind of films that get done, and some of them, like I've worked on some of them, because it's it is they're like, well, it's just a kiss, or it's not that kind of film. I hear that too, and I'm like, ugh. Um, <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's not a supportive anyway. I'm just gonna digress. Um, so there are some that, that use it, but yeah, you, you still have a lot of of pushback of like you're the fun killer. I'm like actually, I'm. What I like to think that we do is we we give the confidence to our performers so that they so that we've thought of all of the things we've thought of all of the the things that 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 go through the mind of of a performer when they're in a, a close proximity to someone. So that they can give the best performance possible so that we can actually, and even if they have a boundary that uh, like whatever that is, like even if it's nudity or just physical contact wise, if, we can still tell that story without having to do ex like that exact thing. Like we can stay, we can, we can honor their boundaries and tell the story that the creative team wants to uh, beautifully right. without railroading boundaries. But you can't railroad boundaries until you know what they are. Right. Um, so I kind of got a couple of questions there. You bet. First off, um, when it comes to what's the actual process? Does the production company say, yeah, we want an intimacy coordinator on set? Or is it something that is mandatory or is it? Uh, right now it's not mandatory. There's, I mean, it's, it's in a, it's in the best practice, Best practice. Uh, but it's not, we're not actually in the IPA yet for uh, ACTRA. Um, we are like, and the SAG agreement again. It's I think it's best practice. There are things that are in there that have to be done, like the forty-eight hour nudity riders, in simulated sex riders. That's a that's a have to. Um, those are in the agreements, but intimacy coordinators themselves not quite in the agreements. We're hoping for twenty twenty four's IPA to be in there. Okay, that's I mean that's what we're aiming for. Yeah, I mean it's in the grand scheme of things, it's still relatively quick. It um, is. Which and is it's, good. And I mean, you look at like the progression of stunts to where it is today. Yeah. Like we didn't, you didn't become a completely like, you didn't have harnesses and helmets and pads. And I mean, you look at the beginning of film and the stunt work, they, no, that, they were really jumping on that train and it was right. going fast yeah. and they lost probably a couple legs during like a lot more accidents happened. And so that was a, like, that was a progression to get to where it is today, to have coordinators, to have qualified coordinators, to have qualified equipment. Like on, so I think intimacy is the same and you're not going to, you're not going to get change overnight yeah. and not everyone's going to be happy about it and not everyone's going to understand it. Yeah. And, and so I think the, the more that we can, can talk about, talk about it and, and, and come at the work in a, in a way that that allows people to say no to have boundaries. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I do it. I, like my little girl is in the industry. Why Kira was as well, my older one, and then my now my youngest. I don't want them to have that moment when there's the kiss and there the director says, "Okay, you know what? You guys just you go for it or just figure it out." Like right. I want them to feel supported. I want I want 
any young lady that's, or young, the young person that is coming up the ranks into the, into the acting world, I want them to be, to be supported and to be able to give confident performances that they don't feel like their skin's going to come off and they're going to cry them, you know, the whole way home. I've done that. Right. And I don't want that for anybody else. And I've heard the horror stories and we don't want that anymore. No, for sure. It, again, it's something that's long overdue. Yeah. Um, and it just takes time. And yeah. it's just going to take time and, and conversations like this. Exactly. So yeah. you know, hopefully uh, we can get the word out and, you know, make it more popular <laughs> <laughs> to do this kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. I don't, I, I mean, I mean there's, so, there's so much to learn. And I think that's one of the things like I love, I love learning. So it's, it's not just like my, got my, like my level one and my level two is through intimacy directors and coordinators, which is American based. And then my level three and now my level four is with intimacy coordinators Canada, but there's still so much more. There's still like, there's still, um, courses that I take from like Lizzie Talbot, who does, uh, Bridgerton. She's the intimacy coordinator there. She does some with the ISS, which is intimacy with stage and screen. But they're in okay. they're in the UK. So there and if that's the lovely thing too, like a lot of COVID was lovely. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it brought upon like the online world a lot more of like getting access to training that's online. So right. there's tons of stuff. So there's LGBTQ, there's like trans awareness, there's all of the stuff that we keep learning about. Cause then it's like, okay, well, when you get a nudity rider and they're trans, what does that look like? And you're like, I don't know. So like let's talk about it. Let's figure that out. And and it's it's really an interesting and and so much learning like group of people that that I just, I love learning from. Yeah, yeah. If if there is a situation, for example, where there is no rider or, or comments, you know, to any sort of intimacy situation, mm. and the director or producer or whatever does come up and say, "Hey, we want you to just show your butt here," can you fight that? Like, can Absolutely. you say, "No, I I don't feel comfortable doing that." Absolutely. And what would be the path to to kind of combat that a bit like as a performer as a performer yeah that's and it's so tough because you don't want to get blacklisted because you don't want to be deemed like a difficult person to work with when the power in the room comes to you and says oh i need this this is that power is the person that's going to hire you for your next job they're going to talk about you i mean i'm hoping that 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 they that the power in the room stop doing that um because they are going to get a yes. Oh, it's okay. I checked in with them. They said yes. Right. You're the power of the room. You, oh, oh good. You checked in with them. That's great. Okay. And it's, but can you advocate for yourself? Absolutely. Yeah, and you know what? Even if, even if so much as they're like, okay, this is going to come up. We've changed the script and there's going to be this, this nude scene. You're good with it. Right. As a performer, we can say, um, sure. Uh, but I, I would like to request an intimacy coordinator. Once a performer requests an intimacy coordinator, they will bring in an intimacy coordinator. Okay, that's kind so of... So that is a way to to at least get some support. And then, like, I, one thing that I, I've said before is, like, I don't mind being the bad guy ever. Um, so if, if, it's, if it's a hard no, then it's a hard no. Right. We don't negotiate that. Yeah. And then, honestly, that's the way it should be, right? There, yeah. there needs to be that comfort level mm -hmm. for both sides. Absolutely. And if it isn't, then you need to figure out either the middle ground. And there or... are, and there, I think there are things coming into into our agreements that, like, if there's going to be nudity, it has to be mentioned in the audition. It has to be mentioned. Um, they could then it then it has to go into the contract, and and so the, all those changes are are being are being made so that the person can say, "No, I'm not showing my butt." And they're not going to lose their job because it wasn't put in the audition. It wasn't put in the contract. Like they can, people are being allowed to say no, which yeah. is amazing. Because as actors, we're always taught to say yes. You get the offer, you say yes, and you, you offer something back, whatever that is. But now we get to say no too. Right. And I have seen, uh, very rarely, but I have seen a couple um, like uh, audition write-ups mm -hmm. where they're like, warning there may be potential for nudity for this role kind of deal, mm -hmm. which is good. Yeah. Gives you that heads up like, mm, okay, I'm not comfortable with that. Absolutely. Back out kind of deal. But um, so seeing that, but it is a slow build, I think. It is. Um, when it comes to actually being on set though, because um, of course you related stunts to, mm -hmm. right? So when it comes to the choreography of it, uh, what's kind of the process there? Like, let's just say it's a simple kissing scene. 
Is is there a certain coordination? Do you sit down with both actors and then so the director have, and it's, well, So something like a simple scene like that of like they come in the room, they have a little kiss, they have a little dialogue, they kiss again, and then they they sit down and they have like a moment and then cut. Um, which I just described the scene that we did recently. Uh, <laughs> that is simple. That is not something I'd be like, ooh, can you know maybe we, if we got a rehearsal, it'd be easier. I wouldn't request a rehearsal for that. Um, I would I would simply talk. Like talk about boundaries, make sure that, and you have the same conversations and, and they're, I mean, we're, our talent, they're professionals, but it's still always good to say like, you don't have to kiss during rehearsal. There is no tongue unless tongue is requested and really shown like, but that would be a writer thing. Like, like do you, so it's, so just going over the basics, they're like, oh yeah, 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 I know. Great. You know, boundaries are good. Your boundaries are good. And often I'll ask too, coming from a stunt where I'll ask like any injuries, like are you going to stand on your left foot too long and you've got a knee injury? I'll talk injuries as well. Um, but yeah, no, it's uh, the director has a vision. The director will will you know, talk it through with me, talk it through with them so that everyone knows, okay, so this is, so we're going to come here. This is like, this is who is initiating the kiss great talk it through then we'll do like a closed a rehearsal with just the director myself and the talent quite often and maybe the dp walk through it again okay and then then we'll open it up and then but okay so it's a process for sure right and i i remember um i was doing some background on klondike hmm. and then there was a scene i um, think someone referred to klondike as vietnam the other day oh really <laughs> oh interesting i don't know okay. why but i was like yeah, I just, anyway, continue. <laughs> well, I, I was just going to say, because there was a scene there where there was a lady who gets up from the tub naked, mm -hmm. right? Um, champagne and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I was part of the background that was in that room. Mm -hmm. And just that scenario, um, I think, would be a good example. Because, I mean, it was somewhat of a closed set, right? It was just, okay, what background actors do we want in there? What camera crew do we need in there? Mm -hmm. And that's it, and then the two actors. So it was fairly closed off. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I have no idea if there was any discussion with her on her comfort level mm -hmm. or anything like that, right? To have these people all staring at her and mm -hmm. you know, kind of deal. You know, and now, actually, I, it's, it's all, like, I love working with background. Background are so eager to to do the right thing. And so I, I've got like a sheet that I'll bring with me on intimacy days that I've got background that are working and it's like, these are the do's and the don'ts and like, don't bring your cell phone. And I, and they're just like, we, we, we turn away when they disrobe and then when we, when then they're ready, then we'll turn back around. And, and they're just so respectful and like, oh yeah, absolutely. Like I can do that. And so I, yeah, I love, I love working with background, but I mean, it's always nice if when there's intimacy to not have a bunch of background. <laughs> right. Yeah. But yeah. sometimes that's the scene and that's the vision and that's the story so that's what that's what it is and that's what we have to work with so let's make it as let's give the everyone the tools to do this as confidently as possible and that means turning around or not taking making sure there's no pictures shutting off our monitors making sure that our crew as as minimal crew as possible yeah so and and those would be like conversations ahead of time absolutely yeah. absolutely um and i do if i remember correctly um my memory's not great nowadays, but um, I think she actually did have like nibble covers. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if that's part of the process as well or if that's something you know, newish it's, or. It's, it's funny, I've got my intimacy kit here just in case you wanted to see anything, but I do have those in there. But our ward, like that, and I think the pioneers really of intimacy was our wardrobe team. Anyone in costumes, they were the ones that, that were, had the robes that would that would hear those the heartbreaking stories that that were that were quite often the advocates for our performers. It was our wardrobe before? So it's I think uh, for myself, I like to work closely with wardrobe because they've they've got the robes. They've they've know the modesty wear. They know what what bits go in what places and and they've got options. And so although I will carry them with me on like on larger sets. I'm the the modesty wear that I have is usually not needed because the wardrobe team that they've had it they've had it for the longest time. Okay. And so yeah, I mean, as an intimacy coordinator, I definitely give props to our, our costumes department that have been carrying a lot of that job for a very long time. Okay. Well, you definitely piqued my interest with the whole kit thing, as to what you, <laughs> what kind of kit you would have. So, what is in your bag of tricks? In my bag of tricks, it's funny. Um, I could bring it out, but I was like, I'm looking at the top thing, and I'm like, okay. I have lots of things in there. Like there's, because some of the things that we do when it comes to nudity, some of them are like stickers. 
So sometimes like hair removal is a thing. So you've got razors, you've got oil, you've got lotion, you've got just deodorant, you've got mints, you've got nipple covers, you've got covers for all different exterior genitalia, interior genitalia. There's 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 and then there's barriers too that you that you put between. So like a floating barrier would usually be like a sponge. Uh, sometimes there's a ball. A ball can help in the moment, uh, but it helps to also keep that distance because you you can't have genitalia touch other genitalia. You just it's just not a thing. Right. It just doesn't. It's it it should never ever happen. So you have like a, so you have your own like barrier that that is attached to your body, but you could also have a floating one which she put in between. That's a lot of the stuff that's in my kit. And then I'm trying to think of like some of the weirder stuff. <laughs> well, this is one. I have a, um, this is my top one. So it's just a sports cup. Okay. Um, but I will use a sports cup if someone, and we'll talk about, we talk about like, it's not very often that it happens it's that uh, someone with like exterior genitalia will have like a, a natural vascular reaction is what I call it. Okay. Um, but if there is, if they have a fear of that, if that is something that is really on their mind of like, what happens if this does not behave the way I want it to? I'm like, okay, so we can use a, we can use a hard cup and, and then no one will know. So it's just something, again, it's just like little things to give our performers confidence to do their, to do their work. So they, so they, they don't have to think, okay, if I, if I have this happen to my body. Right. Like, okay, if that is, a, if that is something that is an issue, let's, let's make it not an issue. That's private to you. Let's let's do that. Um, what else do I have in my bag of tricks? Oh, so much tape, <laughs> so much tape. This, yeah, for different things to tape on if you need to, and yeah, there's lots of. Well, and I gotta say, like I, I've definitely seen a lot of you know simulated sex scenes, and there's a lot of times where I'm like, how are they not actually doing something? <laughs> <laughs> And so, obviously, because I had no idea what some of the tools might have been mm -hmm. to help prevent anything. So that's that's very yeah, interesting. So, yeah, I mean, like, you've got like little, uh, this one I picked up, it's actually for your foot. But if your wardrobe is very small, it's just something that can be put in between that again, it's just it just helps to have a, like a barrier in, in between. And it's for like sensitivity, but it's also for health as well like just to make sure that nothing's touching <laughs> okay all right so yeah I know lots of lots of things and so when it comes to like obviously you've kind of built that up and you've um i'm assuming like does the courses you take does it kind of tell you some of these things oh absolutely okay yeah i was working uh the the first time i took a kit uh i was working with janine wadala um or she was giving a class uh through she has a um, Class is offered through theatrical, theatrical intimacy laboratories till and 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 so yeah so she gave us like a the, the kit class and I was like ooh like just things you don't think of like yeah. I'm like why do you need baby oil oh because I carry a lot of tape and it leaves marks and baby oil gets rid of that tape mark I'm like I knew that from stunts why would I why would I not have that in my mind but yeah there is and then also when I was uh, taking classes through. In, Intimacy Coordinators Canada, same thing. They go through a kit class and, and they teach you, well, like, this is what you're going to need to have because you don't know when you're going to need an extra toothbrush, like that someone's going to request a toothbrush or, or you don't know when someone's going to request some deodorant or you don't know when someone's going to request. There's lots of, of comfort items too. I also carry, um, I carry essential oils with me as well because sometimes that someone wants, someone may want to, to have that smell like in their tent, for example, or... Again, it's just those those conversations of uh, a woman might be menstruating and she uh, is feeling like she's doing a birthing scene and someone's going to be really close. And she's like, what about what about smell? Some women have smell, some women don't have smell. Some women are just worried that they have smell. Right. And so it's like, okay, let's take a panty liner. Let's stick that on the outside of your underwear, underneath like your wardrobe, not touching your skin. Put some essential oil on that to just to so that you feel confident that... If they are going to be close enough to smell something, it's going to be lavender. Like, there's just little things that, like, little salt problem solving things that you, I never thought of before. Right. Because you, like, that's one, that is a thing. Like, if someone has internal genitalia, are they going to be menstruating on the days of, of this, that you guys have scheduled this nudity? 
okay, so if this is like, let's talk about cycle, if that's going to interfere, if that's going to interfere, let's talk to production. And they're like, it has to be this day. I'm like, okay, if it's going to be this day, this is the, this is the roadblock we're going to have. And it's easier for me to have those conversations with production. I think than the performer being, being like, I think I might have my period that day. Right, right. Like it's just, and, and, and a lot of performers don't even think of that until later on. So, I mean, there's just like, there's, there's little conversations to be had that, that people just didn't have before. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um, we are kind of getting near the end of our time here. No, that's, I can talk that's, about it all day long. Absolutely. Um, the one last question I'll kind of ask, um, when it comes to the schooling for it, so the, what you've taken is accredited. Mm -hmm. However, there are other things out there, right? Like, I'm, I'm just kind of wondering if there's just one school of learning or... No, there's, if you go to, if like, especially if you go to this, like, SAG website, there are SAG accredited schools, like teaching facilities. There's, uh, and so those are the ones that you, that will be able to then give you, like, the SAG accredited title. Um, and because it is becoming more of an accredited thing now, I think originally... Early on, it was not because there wasn't anyone else to teach this stuff. There was just the pioneers. There was just like Lindsay Summers. There was just Alicia Rodas. Like there was, there didn't, there wasn't a lot of intimacy coordinators out there. There was just Janine. Like there was so, but now that those people are teaching more, then now we've got more schools that are, that are, the rest of us can learn from and not have to, to sludge through the mud quite as hard as they did. Perfect. Well, on that note, I think we will uh, call it into the show. I am going to do... Uh, so th first off, thank you for being on the show and talking about the intimacy. I think it's a great topic. It's something we've needed for many years. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that and best of luck with thank moving you. it forward. Um, and thanks for the folks watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. We'll see you next week, everything else. So thank you again. And uh, we do want to do a quick little plug for uh, Joe Pickett. Yes. Um, so we have a special guest, if you don't mind coming in. Maybe you can introduce and uh, do a well, little plug. Well, you, my love, I think you can introduce yourself. <laughs> you have to tell Gary your name. I'm or, or the Cameron, camera. Cameron, and I filmed on Joe Pickett. Who do you play? I was Lucy Pickett. Mm -hmm. So I was one of the daughters, and yeah. And where can people watch it? Paramount Plus. And if they don't have Paramount Plus, what can they do? Download it. <laughs> <laughs> they can download it, but it's also a code that's just uh, pick it, and then you get one month free of Paramount Plus. Mm -hmm. So then you can watch, you can watch Billy the Kid, you can watch Joe Pickett, you can watch Stone, like Yellowstone, yeah. There's a lot of things on there. Yep. So you get one month free if you use the code PICKET. Yep. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. So make sure you check that out. Because she's adorable. Adorable. <laughs>